In today's video I show you some hip MRI with metal on metal implants. In my last video I talked about the very confusing nomenclature about hip MRI in metal on metal implants with terms such as metallosis, pseudotumor, osteolysis, adverse local tissue reactions and stuff like that. So make sure to check that video first, it's somewhere around here, the link, and then come back and watch this one. This is now a great moment to subscribe to my channel and also hit the like button. Make sure also to hit the bell button so you get automatically notified every time I upload a new video. So this is our first case and you can see we have a hip arthroplasty on the right hand side which is a metal on metal device. You can see there is a metal cup inside the other metal cup and the femoral head which is also made of metal is articulating with this metal cup here. So this is a metal on metal design. And if you look carefully you can see there is some osteolysis here and here and maybe even around the shoulder of the femoral stem there is some osteolysis which you can see here and here again this one is the acetabular osteolysis and here also at the roof of the acetabulum on the axial view again you can appreciate there is some osteolysis ongoing here and at the acetabulum it's difficult to see in this view now this is the MR of the same patient and we used metal artifact reduction sequences here and you can nicely see the surrounding soft tissue around the hip arthroplasty. And as I have shown you already on the x-ray or radiograph, you can see there is this osteolysis here, this cystic mass, which is predominantly inside the bone, but also is protruding inside the pelvis here with some extra osseous component. And also here we have this mass forming around the cup of the metal on metal arthroplasty. The osteolysis in the trochanter region has slightly different signal intensity. It's darker, it's more hypointense compared to this cystic lesion up here. You can appreciate it here, here. And also we have some dark material inside the joint in contact with the femoral head and the cup here, clearly inside the joint, which is in continuation also with this stuff here. And you can see there is thickening here, some solid component, which is synovitis in some degree. And here it's less thick. And here we have mass-like or other signal changes. I like the T1 sequence when assessing osteolysis because it gives you a nice contrast also to the bone and especially the osteolysis here in the trochanter region is more easily depicted on the T1 sequence. And you can see it's in continuation here. This was the area with the darker components on the stir sequence. And you can see it's going all around here and then protruding inside the pelvis. This is a proton density weighted sequence and you can also see this formation going around the neck, around the cup, here, all this and also inside the trochanter region with osteolysis and also extra osteous components. This one is an axial term sequence and it's also a very nice sequence because you can see the osteolysis here with the extra osseous component. Cystic in presentation here. And then we have the femoral neck. We have too much fluid here. And then we have this little bit darker components around here. And then we have here with more solid components. So. How do we describe this with regards to the terminology that I have discussed in the previous video? We have a metal on metal device, so we can certainly say it's an ALTR or an ARMD. That's basically the umbrella term to describe all these findings. I would still describe that there is osteolysis specifically, but it's basically part of the ALTR here in this case. Because we have these darker components and slightly hypointense rims around the osteolysis, 
We can even think about using the term metallosis because as we have learned, metallosis can sometimes be prominent with hypointense rims around these lesions. And then this part here is clearly synovitis. You can measure the thickness of the synovitis parts here or even better seen on our sagittal proton density weighted sequence here. And if it's over seven millimeters in thickness, which is clearly the case here, it's about one centimeter, it's somewhat associated with the histological diagnosis of LVAL. So I would describe this whole finding as a metal-on-metal -metal hip orthoplasty with osteolysis and findings consistent with ALTR. And it's probably not wrong to use the term metallosis as well because we have these darker components, this hypointense rim in the periphery, most likely due to susceptibility artifacts. And we also have these darker components here, which are typically more associated with metallosis instead of the histological diagnosis of LVAL. This is a different patient who has bilateral ASR, which stands for articular surface replacement, which is also a metal on metal system, as you can appreciate here with the metal cup and the large femoral head. So if you look here on this axial on the right hand side, you can see that there is an osteolysis here. It's less visible on the AP view here. But let's have a look at the MR. This is the MR of this patient. And I typically start off with a coronal stir sequence. And you can see that the metal artifacts are somewhat reduced with this sequence. And with the new metal artifact reduction sequences, it's very easy and very beautiful to scan these patients. So what we can see here, we have some bone marrow edema at the trochanteric region. We are only focusing here on the right joint. So you have this bone marrow edema here. There is some stress going on. And then we have this black mass here inside the bone around the pin, which is the osteolysis that we saw in the axial view. And with this dark stuff inside here, this is highly suggestive of metallosis. Then we have also this cystic formation, a lot of effusion, and this cystic mass around the neck. And we don't seem to have any osteolysis in the acetabular bone. Again, notice this very hypointense rim around this cystic lesions here, here, which is likely due to susceptibility artifacts from metal debris. So in this case, again, I would probably describe this as a metal on metal device with osteolysis in the femoral neck, with metallosis and a large effusion here, which is due to basically synovitis. This time there is not a lot of synovial thickening though, as opposed to the previous case that I have shown you. Let's have a look at another plane here. This one is the axial view. Again, you can see the osteolysis here, which is filled with hypointense or even signal free stuff. And then we have a large effusion extending all around the surrounding structures, even damaging them. And again, we have this very hypointense rim around it and not a lot of synovial thickening and no osteolysis in the acetabulum. I already told you that I like the T1 sequence because of the nice contrast between the fat marrow and the osteolysis here. So it's easy to see here and we don't have osteolysis in the acetabulum around the cup. Also here on the sagittal view you can nicely see the osteolysis here. This time it's a proton density weighted sequence because the fluid here is hyper intense and not muscle intense. And this one is a T2 weighted sequence again. This osteolysis here filled with metal debris and a large effusion with synovitis and hypointense rim. So in conclusion I would call this a ASR or metal on metal device with osteolysis around the pin of the femoral head replacement with extensive effusion due to metal debris. And if you want to keep it simple, you can also use the term that this is a metal on metal device with ALTR or ARMD with osteolysis here. And you can also use the term metallosis here. Again, I would not use the term LVAL 
because it's a histological diagnosis first of all and because there is not a lot of synovial thickening which seems to correlate with the histological diagnosis of LVAL. This is probably just one way to do it and certainly the nomenclature is still evolving and other radiologists might use or approach this in a different way. If you do so, please comment below. I'm always happy to learn from others and I hope you still get an impression on at least one way or my way how to do it. I have a video on my Patreon page where I show some pitfalls and differential diagnosis for ALTR findings around the metal on metal hip. You can find the video on my Patreon page, but it's Patreon only, so I do basically once every month a video for my patrons only, and you can get access if you become one of my patrons. So go to my Patreon page, you can find the link down in the description, and check it out whether this is something for you. And that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.